Hello everybody. Ever since I built my CNC machine I've been fascinated by the add-ons and accessories people have made to their own DIY machines. Uh, none more than the Z-axis or Z-axis touch probe uh, which I've long wanted to implement on my machine. Now I must thank Guru Brew for adding the vital piece of information to my knowledge on how to go about this. So this one is dedicated to him. The first thing we'll do is look at the complete wiring diagram for the system and see how the probe is wired into the uniport board. And this is the section of the circuit we're interested in. We've got to configure the Z height probe through one of these inputs which I've used input 3 so we've got the Z height probe connections through this pin 3 into input 3 which is driving the opto isolator here and that goes out through pin 12 and pin 12 is the one we must configure in the ports and pins section of the Mac 3 configuration. So remember pin 12. And remembering that the input pin on the uniport board is pin 12, we go to the ports and pins dialog box, choose input signals, scroll down to probe, and we need to enable it. It's already set to port 1 and the pin number is 12. We also need to check active low and click on the apply button and that's it. And uh, this is the button we want to program. So we simply go to operator edit button script and we get three buttons flashing reference all home G code and auto tool zero click on the button we want to do now on your version of Mac 3 there's probably only one line of code up here and it's a blank so you simply paste into here the code you've already copied elsewhere and then modify the parameters you wish to use. For example, minus four is the distance the Z probe will travel before it gives up. Now minus four obviously indicates that the system for this particular application is using inches. So if you were using millimeters you would change that to minus 100 or something else to suit your system. You might want to change some feed rates and the retract height retract height of 1 indicates to me that it's probably 1 inch you might want to change that to 25 millimeters so you simply change those parameters and save it. Close file and you're finished. And here is the actual script on my machine. Uh, I have changed the Z travel to minus 25 here which is the distance that the tool will travel before it gives up and I've got the speed running at F100 millimeters per minute also down here I've got the retract height if I can get my finger in the right place to 12 millimeters and that's going to retract at F200. I suppose you could uh, put G0 in here and it will retract as fast as possible. I might 
do that later and give it a try. Also I've changed the plate thickness to 0 0.91 of a millimeter. I might have said 16 gauge earlier on but it's really less than a millimeter. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate this working. And now here I've got some fancy gold plated socketry for reliability in, into which I can plug various devices such as the limit switches and the probe and maybe later on a whole centre finder. Now out of this little black box with a nice gold plated socketry on it we come out through the cable and up into the control box into the control box through the grey ribbon cable and into the inputs on the Uniport breakout board okay now I've got the tool at a height much greater than 25 millimeters it looks about three inches or 75 millimeters at that point there so now I'll move over to the screen and we're going to activate the auto tool zero slight delay and then the z-axis will start to move Get to minus 25 and then give up. We retract to 12. There you are. I'm now set well into the 25 millimeter range. So now we'll go over to Mach 3. Activate auto zero. After three seconds, it starts to run down. It'll touch the probe and retract to 12. And there we are. We remove this. And now Go to zero and we're now gone down to this thickness of paper and it's you can just feel it touching the paper. And you might be all be able also to see that the shadow meets the point of the tool right on the paper marvellous. The touch probe plate is merely a turned piece of brass into a brass ring with a piece of 16 gauge brass plate soft soldered on the bottom then hoid in a lathe and turned to make look nice and then polished nice and flat and then the plate itself is measured accurately and that measurement is added to the button code. The connection is made with a special little screw which is a modified hex brass screw again 
put in the lathe and, and a little hole drilled so that the wire can be soldered into it and then screwed onto the plate assembly. And that's it. Don't think I need to explain exactly how that is made. It's fairly straightforward. I've also got on here a gold plated crocodile clip. I would suggest that everybody uses gold plated connections as far as possible for this particular modification because you want utter reliability. You don't want any breaks in the system otherwise you could be driving this straight through the bottom of your plate into the baseboard if you're not careful. So reliability here is the key.